I want you to consider two scenarios. In the first scenario, your life partner brings you a cup of tea as if they anticipated that you really needed one. In the second scenario, you feel like a cup of tea and you ask your life partner if they wouldn't mind making you one. Which do you prefer? Which tastes sweeter? In conventional circumstances, when raising infants, we spend a lot of time thinking, what's going on for baby? Whatever answer we can come up with, based on our observations of the child and time of day and other contextual factors, we respond to what we think is the baby's experience, including their needs. Most of the time we get it right and we anticipate when they need to sleep and we pop them down to sleep. We anticipate when they may be hungry and we give them a feed or when they're a little bit uncomfortable and windy after a feed and we burp them. We also anticipate when they would really like to be interacted with and cuddled and play with, and we respond to those needs as well. The infant's experience, of course, is that we're awesome, that the adults in their life understand their needs and respond to them without them having to do anything or say anything to make it so, which is lucky, really, because, of course, they don't have the words to express themselves Rather, we need to interpret what's going on for them. Children and young people who are recovering from a tough start to life have often not had enough of these kinds of experiences or they've been inconsistent. The result is that unlike the infant in conventional care circumstances, they have not learned that they can rely and depend on us as their caregivers to be able to understand and respond to their experience, including their needs, without them having to work hard to make it so. Rather, their learning has been that they have to make a fuss in order to get their needs responded to. Like infants in conventional care circumstances, children and young people who are recovering from a tough start to life benefit from us responding to their experience and particularly their needs proactively. That is, without them having to do anything or say anything to make it so. If we don't respond to their needs and their experience proactively, how will they ever know that they can rely on us to understand and respond to their needs without having to resort to coercive or controlling behaviours to draw attention to their needs and have them responded to? Children and young people who are recovering from a tough start to life need us to respond to their needs and their experience proactively.